Hi everyone and welcome to the second part of a client connectivity lecture. This lecture will discuss the practical side of implementing client failover. You will specifically learn how to do the following. Create Oracle database services, configure the outbound connect timeout, configure the OCI client for connect timeout failover, and configure transparent application failover, TAF. This is a reminder of your roadmap to implement automatic client failover in the applications that support FAN technology. You have to create a database service in all the databases included in your data guard configuration. This service will be used by the application to get access to the database. You should also configure the data guard broker and enable the fast start failover option in it. If your application is a single instance database, it must be configured in Oracle Restart. For OCI applications, you configure the Transparent Application Failover, or TAF. For GDBC clients, you configure FCF. And for ODB.NET applications, you do the same configuration as the one you do in OCI applications, plus some further settings. As I said, to use FAN for automatic application failover, you must create a database service. Starting from Oracle 11 GR2, you use SRVCTL to create a database service. The slide is showing a code sample of how to use this command to create a database service for the primary and standby databases. Notice that the role parameter takes primary value in both of them. This is important because you want the service to be available in the database only if the database is running in a primary role. When you create a database service using this method, the grid infrastructure will take care of restarting this service when you reboot the system. This is a nice feature introduced in Oracle 11GR2. In older versions, you have to create a database trigger to implement the same functionality. As I said in the previous lecture, TCP timeout is one of the challenges that are faced by clients when they want to fail over. Usually the default TCP timeout is very high for normal applications. You therefore need to configure the TCP timeout in the client side. Luckily, this is very easy. If your client is OCI, Outbound Connect Timeout is set in the SQL.ora file. Use the parameter SQLnet.outbound underscore connect underscore timeout. If your client is Oracle GDBC, set the data source property that is shown in the slide SQLnet def.tcp underscore con timeout underscore str. Generally speaking, it is recommended to set this parameter to 3 seconds. This slide is showing you how to configure an OCI client for connect time failover. This means when the client wants to connect to the database, it will automatically connect to the current primary database. In this case, you need to configure the tnsnames.ora file as shown in the slide example. Notice the new settings in this configuration. First, notice the load balance parameter. This parameter can be put under either the description list parameter, the description parameter, or the address list parameter. If you set this parameter to on, yes, or true, the client will randomly pick up one of the hosts in the address list and try to connect to it. If you set this parameter to off, no, or false, Oracle Net will try the first host in the address list. If the connection fails and the failover parameter is enabled, then Oracle Net tries the addresses sequentially until one succeeds. This is called client load balancing. The second parameter that you can notice in the configuration is the failover parameter. This parameter controls the connect time failover for multiple addresses. When you set this parameter to on, yes or true, Oracle Net at connect time fails over to a different address if the first protocol address fails. When you set the parameter to off, 
no or false, Oracle Net tries connecting to only one protocol address. This is equivalent to turning off the client side automatic failover. You also have the connect timeout parameter. This parameter is equivalent to the sqlnet.ora parameter sqlnet.outbound underscore connect timeout and it actually overwrites it. As its name implies, this parameter specifies the timeout duration in seconds during which a client should establish a connection to the Oracle database. The next parameter is the transport connect timeout. This is the connection timeout for the Redo transport services. The retry count parameter specifies the number of times the address list is traversed. For example, if you set this parameter to 3 and you have two hosts under the address list, the client will try to connect to the first host. If it fails, it will try to connect to the second host. If it fails, it will try the same connection attempts twice. If it fails, it will consider that the connection cannot be made and an error will return to the client. Under the address list, you will list all the servers that host your data guard configuration databases. Finally, you have the service name parameter. You use it to define the service name of your database. It will be the same for all the databases in your data guard configuration. This slide is showing you how to configure the client application so that the current sessions are automatically filled over to the new primary database without losing their current connections. This usually works fine if the current running statement is select statement. The session could be closed though if the running statement is uncommitted DML statement. For OCI clients to fail over current sessions, you need to use the transparent application failover or TAF. I will talk in the next slide about configuring TAF for OCI clients. As I said earlier, you configure TAF to make the current sessions of the OCI applications fail over to the new primary database without losing their current connections. To enable the TAF in tnsnames.ora file, you configure failover mode parameter. This parameter in itself supports the following parameters. Type parameter is used to specify the type of failover. It accepts one of three values, session, select, or none. If you assign session to this parameter, the client, when it fails over, it creates a new session. If there was a select statement running when the client is trying to fail over, it will not be recovered. If you assign select value to the parameter, a new session will be created and if there is a running select statement, it will continue fetching its rows. If you assign none value to the parameter, no failover will happen. And this is the default value of this parameter. The second parameter that the failover mode is using is called method parameter. Method parameter controls how fast the failover should take place. It accepts one of two values, basic or pre-connect. Basic value makes the client establish the failover session at time of failure. Pre-connect value, on the other hand, makes the client create another session at login time. Retries is another parameter that the failover mode recognizes. This parameter specifies the number of times a client is trying to connect after a failover. The last parameter that could come under the failover mode is the delay parameter. This parameter specifies the number of seconds between each connection attempt. The slide is showing an example of configuring TAF in tnsnames.ora file. In this example, if the client fails over, the current select statement will hang. Meanwhile, the client will try to connect to the database service in the second host. If that connection succeeds, it will rerun the select statement and fetch remaining rows, and the select statement will go on. At login time, the client will have a single session connected to the database service. 
If connecting to the database service in the other host fails, the client will wait for 5 seconds before it tries to make the connection again. The client keeps trying for 15 times. TAF can be configured on the server side. You define it in the database service level. To do that, you use modify service procedure in the dbms underscore service package. The slide is showing an example of using this procedure. The parameters that the procedure accepts are similar to the TAF parameters that you define in the client side. This lecture covered the procedure you would follow to configure the client failover for an OCI application. You just create the database service and configure the tnsnames.ora and sql.ora files. The configuration for other application type is a bit different. For more information about client side failover, you can refer to the Oracle white paper, Client Failover Best Practices for Highly Available Oracle Databases. In this lecture, you should have learned how to do the following. Create Oracle Database Services. Configure the Outbound Connect Timeout. Configure the OCI Client for Connect Time Failover. And Configure Transparent Application Failover, or TAF. In conclusion, as you have seen, there are many options for enabling a client failover solution. However, the roadmap for implementing the solution is nearly the same. You have specifically learned how to configure an OCI client for connect time failover as well as for current session failover. If your client is of other type, refer to the reference that I presented at the end of this lecture to obtain further details. In the next lecture, you will have some hands-on practical experience on implementing automatic client failover in SQL+. Thanks for staying with me and see you in the next lecture.